Thank you for the opportunity to speak about regards to Bill 18. I had planned to speak in person, but however, due to my work schedule, I've been unable to attend. I am grateful, however, for the opportunity to be able to present this letter to the province instead. My name is Marianne Curtis. I am the head writer for the Dawson Trail Dispatch, a southern Manitoba monthly newspaper. I am also the author of several books, including my personal memoir, Finding Gloria. When I sat down to write my story, I did so with the purpose of it having to find out why I was having issues with certain parts of my life. Once I opened up my heart and allowed it to speak through my pen, I was finally able to come to grips with my past and it became a significant milestone within my healing process. As a result, much to my surprise, I was even nominated for a Woman of Distinction Award this past spring by people who read my story. It was an honour that I felt I did not deserve and yet it gives testament to how far I have come. I stand, wanted to stand before you here today as a survivor. It is important for me to stand up and say, yes, I was bullied. I was bullied to the extreme and I survived. This went on for six years while I was attending school in Steinbach at three different Hanover School Division schools. I was punched, hit, had my hair cut, I had clothes stolen or torn. I was stripped naked by classmates and mocked for being bruised and skinny. I was bullied off a high diving board and almost drowned. They, there were boys that got sadistic pleasure from punching me until I cried every single day. They'd steal my meager lunch and stomp on it and spit on it. It was even once exchanged for dog feces. I was deliberately pushed down the stairs at the school. I was locked in a closet so I'd missed the school bus. I was pushed into traffic. I had school books, textbooks, homework, library books destroyed by classmates because they could get away with it. In grade 5, my teachers put me in the back of a class with a wall around my desk. They believed that by keeping me away from the general population, students would be kinder to me, but it made things worse. I went to school daily in constant terror. I could tell my, couldn't tell my teachers, couldn't tell my principals, because when I did, they either did not believe me or that my parents were called in, which made things even worse. What no, what no one knew at the time was that one, things at home were much worse. My adoptive mother had suffered from a mental illness, and she did not drink. While well, she did not drink and do drugs, she did have a vicious temper, and she knew how to use a rubber hose or a leather strap. When I would get home, I would get beaten, starved, locked in the basement, out of the house. There was no escape from the abuse at school or at home. I was picked on because I was ugly. I was Ukrainian. I had braids. I was adopted. I was Catholic. I wore dresses. I was stupid. I was not related to anybody in town. I didn't go to the local church. I wore glasses. I didn't have boobs. I didn't have friends. The teachers hated me. The students hated me. I heard it all, and every day at school was excruciating. Did I mention that most of my tor tormentors came from God-fearing Christian families? In grade 10, I was raped at the SRSS. I was suspended. When I went back to school, the bullying was even worse, and yes, it was possible. No one, now people were throwing money at me. They called me horrible names. I became a moving target for every pubescent pervert in school until finally a grade 12 was caught, boy was caught in the act of sexually assaulting me. I was deemed the problem and immediately expelled while my attack got to graduate. This was how the school helped dealt with the problem. I was never offered help counseling or even an opportunity to explain to what happened. Unfortunately, once I got home full time, the abuse at home worsened and I eventually had to run away, away from home. I was afraid that my mother would kill me and no one would care. I ended up in foster care and for the first time in my life, people started to listen to me. I was given help and the protection that I needed. It was This was 30 years ago. Needless to say, when I heard that Bill 18 was coming down the pipe, I was elated. Finally, someone was going to do something to protect kids like me. Kids who had been beaten to mental submission to the point that it ruined their lives and stripped them of all hope. It breaks my heart when I hear that kids are killing themselves because they're not being heard, that they're being bullied into it. Girls killing themselves because they're being taken advantage of and raped. Social media bullying. Kids who believe that it's easier to die than tell their families that they're gay. Kids should not feel that death is their only recourse when something horrific happens to them. They should be protected, not ostracized. This is what I'd hoped Bill 18 would achieve. Unfortunately, what it has done is cause even more conflict. Over the past few months, I've been disgusted by the attitudes coming from various communities. Because of the simple inclusion of the gay-straight alliance in the bill, bigots young and old have surfaced. To suggest, as some have, that allowing a gay-straight straight alliance 
to have a group in the schools would lead to pedophilia and bestiality is downright ludicrous. It is my opinion that bully needs to be addressed. Bill 18 is a great way to start, but it should be all-inclusive or not at all. While I understand the importance of stressing that gay-straight alliance be included, excluding other groups of equal importance gives the appearance of pushing certain agendas and not addressing bullying as a whole. I'd like to think that that was not the province intent in writing this bill, that this was an oversight that can be fixed. Might I suggest that the province rewrite the bill to include all groups, including Christian Bible study groups, or not list specific groups at all? Addressing bullying is very important. Protecting our children is even more important. If school divisions are not prepared to handle certain situations, then someone has to step in and help them do it. Look at what happened to me. No one should. No one ever told me I could have pressed charges. No one offered me counseling. No one even wanted to talk about what happened. I was considered a threat to the general population, deemed promiscuous, and tossed aside. No one ever acknowledged that I was raped until I published my book. Then people started coming forward and apologizing for not stepping forward and doing the right thing at the right time. But guess what? The damage was done. I had a reputation I did not earn. I had no self-esteem. And to be frank, I saw no value in myself. Maybe if one teacher had said, I believe in you, or can we talk about what happened, my life would have been very different. Maybe if there had been protocols in place to deal with situations like this, I would not have lost about 20 years of my life because the system failed. But at the same time, I'm very grateful for this loss. It has given me the courage to stand, to stand up and find the healing that I needed and the ability to find my voice. I stand here because of my bullies. I have proved to them and myself that I am someone and that I matter and they are not and will not win. On behalf of myself and every other person who has ever been bullied, do not let them win. Take time to write a proper, all-inclusive bill that includes ramifications and workable solutions. Our children want and need this protection. Invite them to the table. Listen to them. The kids that are living through this can provide the best insight. This is your opportunity, Manitoba, to be a leader. Make this bill a solution and not part of the problem. Thank you for your time.